Hello again, everybody. Steve Politi from the Star Ledger, joined by Ricky Williams this week. No, it's not Ricky Williams. It's it's Tom Lucci with a, a different shirt today. It's Tom, help, first of all, it's helping me with my withdrawal from big time college football. That's the first. This point. is this is the first the point. point. Okay. This is there's actually a point to this. I, I'd the, like, we, I think the viewers would love to hear why. Okay. The point that. is this: coming out of high school, Dom Natale was actually ranked higher by rivals in all the recruiting services than Colt McCoy. Colt McCoy is now the Heisman leader, quarterback in the number one team in the country, and ha holds just about every passing record that Texas has. I'm not saying that Dom Natale is Colt McCoy, but how do we know what Dom Natale is? Dom Natale has been in, at Rutgers for three years since transferring to Michigan State. He's not played it down. Right. You know, so that's the point. Where, when are we going to see something a little different with one of the worst offenses in the country? Yeah, you're, and, at, you're at the all bets are off point now. One in, no. one in five. You've got to do something to, to make a change here. I, I, see, I saw your stat you had on Teal's offense. The numbers were just, I mean, just jarring what the team has done in, in his drives at quarterback. It's tough. It, it, you know, and the, and the start's one in five. And, you know, as I said, I'm not saying Don Natale's the answer, but we don't know who the answer is. You know, we haven't seen Chris Paul at the end except for two or three drives. Jabu Lovelace is out. There's two freshmen sitting down. I mean, they've changed everything except the quarterback. Uh, you know, and again, we're going to get back to laying this all on Mike Teal. I'm not laying it all on Mike Teal. I'm just saying, Mike Teal, sit for a series or two. Let's see what somebody else can do. That's the only thing I'm saying. When, you, when your offense is consistently bad and you've set a season low for four consecutive games in total offense, it's time for a change. Well, let me ask you this question, though. Is Tom Vitale the quarterback of the future of this team, or is that player in the program now at all? Well, again, Steve, we don't know. Right. We, I mean, that's even, if, even if they had him start quarterback now, he, he's a junior, right? I mean, he's only he's one He's got more, a year left. One more year, year left. Jabu Lovelace has a year left. Um, is, you it, know, is it Savage, the recruit they have coming in? Is it, you know... It, uh, D.C. Jefferson? D.C. Jefferson. Who is the quarterback of the future if you had to pick one right now? Well, Steve, that's another part of this whole point that under underscores what we're trying to say here is by sticking with Teal, a fifth-year senior... You're not only struggling this year, but you haven't set yourself right. up for next year. They have a chance to be a decent football team next year once they get rid of, well, some of the dead weight among the starters, let's put it that way, that are not performing well this year. They have a chance to be a good football team next year, but they don't have a quarterback. They haven't played anybody. They haven't shown anybody else can play the position because Mike Teal has taken in the five Division I opponents 57 of the 59 drives. He's directed. So how do you know who can do anything else? What I don't understand is how is, how is a a relatively productive quarterback like Teal go into this kind of funk. How is a kid like Tyquan Underwood, who was, by all accounts, one of arguably had one of the best seasons in Rutgers history as a receiver, yes. completely disappear like he has? What? How does this happen from one year to another? Can you figure out where these kids have gone and why they've become, you know, what you just call dead weight as starters? Well, with Mike, I think we've established that you know the absence of a good offensive line, the absence of uh, Ray Rice at running back. Uh, you know, that contributes to him and his lack of mobility. He's a certain style quarterback, needs to play in a certain system. Right. You know, and that, that's where I think Natale, just for a change of pace, brings something because he's mobile. I'm not saying he's a, a, a pure runner, but he has the ability to float the pocket, as Cincinnati did with Chaz Anderson last week. And he was able to throw for 239 yards against Rutgers as a redshirt freshman because they floated the pocket, they moved him around a little bit. Uh, I think Natale can do that, at least from what we've seen in practice in the scrimmages. Mike can't do that. We know Mike can't do that. As far as Underwood, I mean, that's the, one of the great mysteries on this team. I, I think he's just lost confidence. I think Mike has lost confidence in him. I think he's lost confidence in Mike. And I think it's a situation where they don't, the, the offensive coordinator, John McNulty, doesn't trust him enough to get him the ball. Right. Now, you said it best in your, your game story from Cincinnati. It's almost become like Groundhog Day. I mean, you've, you have kidnapped Punxsutawney Phil at this point. Haven't you? It's in your car. So he's in your car someplace. See, you could drive off a clip. I mean, what? Have you started ice sculpting yet with the chainsaw uh, like, like Bill Murray did in the movie? You know, what, you know what's the, I, I think is the tantalizing part about this is that they've lost three road games by a total of 12 points. So it's one of those things where you're losing, so do you want to make a change because you're right there, or do you have to make a change because you are losing regardless of the, you know, the margin of victory? I don't know. I think it's a tough call for Greg, but I think changes have to be made, and Connecticut's going to be a great test this week. Right. Now they bring in Donald Brown, who is arguably one of the best running backs in the country now, a guy from New Jersey that, that Rutgers took away, that UConn took away from Rutgers. Was Rutgers ever interested in that kid? And if not... How does Donald Brown end up in? At well, Greg, Greg Shiano said this week that they, they did recruit him, but uh, obviously they went in a different direction. They had Ray Rice. Right. Uh, you know, they had so, some other running backs, so they didn't go in that direction. Donald Brown's now leading the country. The interesting thing to me is going to be to see this week how Rutgers handles another inexperienced quarterback. Mm -hmm. uh, Zach, Zach Frazier is a sophomore. He, by the way, a little trivia here. He's from Mechanicsburg, PA, home of one of the greatest quarterbacks in Rutgers history. I know you won't know, but Scott Ernie. Scott Ernie, of uh, course. So, uh, you know, it's... It, 
how does this defense handle that? Do they give the offense a chance to, to you know, right. win this football game for a change? Right. Okay, you are now 0-6 on the season. 0-6. I know people are watching, tuning not just to see what you'll wear, but what, who you're going to pick this week. To see how much I can yes. embarrass myself further. This is, this is the I one, think right? this is the breakout game. This is the breakout this game. This is a breakout game. Mm-hmm. I think we're going to see an explosion by the offense. Mm-hmm. And I think Rutgers wins this 17-14. That's a big explosion. Huh? 17 is, whole points. Well, I mean, last week they scored 10. You are risking your rep- rep- reputation on Rutgers again. You could be 0-7. An explosion by the offense. This is an explosion by the offense. All right, I'm going to go with uh, Connecticut 28-10 to because uh, I've been watching Rutgers, and I don't think they're going to win that game. Are you going to sing a couple bars of, of Deep in the Heart of Texas for All us? I'm saying is hook them horns. All right, Bebo. Thanks for watching. Catch you next week.